Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Reema Tenduka. With me is Sonal Butra. And the top stories at 1.30 p.m. are markets trade near the day's low as stocks slip on fears of sustained high inflation and caution ahead of the U.S. CPI print tomorrow. All sectoral indices in the red led by PSU banks, IT and autos. Midcaps take a bigger beating. Coforth stock slips after a transaction of over 2,400 crore rupees with 9.8% of its equity changing hands. Prominent stakeholders Barings is the likely seller, while InfoH2 slides post its uh, quarter three loss and concerns over hiring slowdown in the IT sector. From the auto ancillary space, Balakrishna industry slumps 10% on a weak set of Q3 earnings. Margins fall 17%, profit plunges 70%. The company faces challenges of destocking and recession fears continue to hit demand. Dishman Carbogen spurts after the company's quarter three net profit rose 33%. Revenue grew across all segments due to strong demand and healthy order book. All right, those are the top headlines that we are tracking for you on Midcap Radar. The markets, they continue to be lower, but there has been substantial recovery from the lows as well. 50 points uh, from the lows of the day. We'll have to see whether this recovery sustains or not. And Reliance Industries is the one which is leading to this recovery from the lows as well. But that stock continues to be in the red right now. Uh, so that is something we'll be tracking for you. The other thing is that while all the sectoral indices are in the red, uh, it's the nifty CPSC which is higher, up around 6 tenths of percent. So, of course, um, the earnings fine print that is coming Coming through and all the updates that we are getting from the global markets continues the, to impact the markets. For now, Gujarat Gas's numbers at the bottom of your screen and the first numbers, they look like a big beat. Uh, the net profit has come at 371 crore rupees versus a poll of 186 crore rupees. We'll have to check for any one-offs there. The revenue is too high at this time around. Uh, quarter 3 was expected to be a weaker quarter because of the sharp rise in domestic gas prices that we saw. Also, users had switched to propane versus uh, gas because of lower propane prices. So that is something which was uh, supposed to be impacting numbers this time. I'll just quickly take a look at what the volumes have looked like and the EBITDA number as well because definitely it's a beat. The stock has uh, spiked to the day's high. Uh, till the time I do that, Rima, I'll just quickly uh, take a look at EBITDA also higher at 582 crore rupees. So definitely it's a top-down beat uh, for Gujarat Gas. Just quickly taking a look at the volume numbers as well and see where this big beat is really coming from. Okay, as of now, there is no exceptional item. Uh, so it looks like a margin-led uh, beat, a top-down beat, in fact, for Gujarat Gas. EBITDA margins at 15.8%, a good 500 basis points ahead of our estimate of 10.3%, so beating our estimate by 550 basis points. Uh, as Sonal um, you know, goes through the PNL of Gujarat Gas, let me invite Rahul Sharma of Equity 99 Advisors on the show now. Uh, Rahul, what have you made of the sell-off that we've seen, particularly in the broader markets? Last week, the mid-caps outperformed the frontline indices. The mid-cap index was up more than 2%, even as uh, the frontline indices didn't do anything. And today, those tables have turned. There is a reversal. Mid-caps are sharply lower. The mid-cap index is down a percent and a half. Your thoughts on the day so far, any trends that you've picked up and the trades that you would recommend? Yes, good afternoon, Reema. See, uh, for both the indices, I think uh, market is not able uh, to show any decisive moves uh, confidently and overall setup is looking weak right now. My advice uh, to all our viewers would be to remain stock specific and follow strict stop losses and targets. Particularly talking about Nifty, I feel 17,700 and 17,650 is the immediate support levels followed by 70,500 which is a bigger support level for the, for the Nifty. And uh, on the upside, I think 17,850 and 900 are the levels which will act as the immediate resistance, uh, followed by 18,000 and 18,000, which is the which is the upper band. And Bank Nifty on the similar uh, view, I think 41,000, 150, and 41,000 are the support levels. Okay. Okay. Uh, and what would your individual uh, technical picks be? Uh, see, Sunil, my technical pick uh, today is the first CG Power, uh, which is trading around 331, 332 rupees. Stock has been continuously uh, making highs. Despite of uh, volatility of the market, charge structure is very much positive, and still it has gone not gone into the overbought zone. Trend line breakout on daily charts and weekly charts are visible. It has got good potential to reach 350 plus levels. So the target price will be set at 350 and stop loss at 320 for CG Power. And the second selection is also from the power segment, uh, NTPC. Uh, this uh, looks really good on the technical charts. It has been consolidating below its 100 demo from few last session. 
Today, the daily candle has over the consolidation and has been trading above its 100 MR. So the target levels for NTPC is set at 175, keeping stop loss at 164 levels. Okay, all right, Rahul, thank you uh, so much uh, for that. Uh, just a quick word on Gujarat Gas's numbers. Uh, of course, it's a big beat. So revenues have come in 300 crore rupees higher than what was expected. And margins to at 15%. The expectation was of a uh, bigger margin fall as well. So margins at 15% versus 16% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. So uh, what really happens here, Reema, is if the volumes are higher. So volumes this time around for Gujarat Gas, they've come in slightly lower than what was the street was working with, 7.6 M. Uh, uh, MMSCMD was the uh, 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 was the expectation. It has come in at 7.3 MMSCMD. As you go higher in terms of volumes as well, the company has to source uh, spot LNG at the spot prices. And right now we were seeing that spot prices were on the higher level. So maybe because volumes have been on the lower side, they did not have to source uh, raw material at higher prices. And that's the reason why we have seen this big beat as far as margins are concerned. So despite lower volumes than what of course is expected, uh, margins have been higher. It's because the raw material prices have been lower than what was expected. Additionally, uh, there is an increase on the top line as well versus what was expected. So a 300 crore P beat there as well. Uh, so it is a top-down beat largely led by lower raw material prices. Volumes are slightly lower than what was expected. So this has been a realization-led beat as well for the company. The company says that during the quarter, they added 48,600 new domestic customers, 228 commercial customers, and 49 new industrial customers as well. And as on 31st December, they have signed 5,25,000 CMD of volumes which are yet to be commissioned. And now what's happening is propane prices, they've also been hiked. So they are at par with Gujarat gases prices. So there is a possibility that industrial customers will move back to the cheaper prices uh, that Gujarat gas is providing. So the outlook, of course, is positive. And the recent HPHT gas uh, prices, which had been cut by the government, that also provides support to city as distribution companies. So yes, the outlook is strong and also the numbers are strong this time around. That's why the stock is higher in trade as well. Okay, interesting. Thank you very much for explaining that. Get into a break. On the other side, we'll be joined by you, Shaker, founder, promoter, and MD at Galaxy Surfactants. Galaxy Surfactants is buzzing in trade after reporting a strong set of quarter three numbers. The revenue is up 16%. Profit after tax also is up 133%. Uh, they are largely on the back of improving supply side situation and uh, also improved realizations as well. To discuss this and whether uh, this uh, bullish sentiment continues in quarter four as well, we have you, Shekhar, the founder, promoter and managing director at the company joining us now. Mr. Shekhar, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us here on good CNBC TV 18. Uh, it has been a good set of quarter three numbers. There's still a sequential decline that we have seen. Can you tell us how has quarter four panned out? Because you are talking about supply side situation improving. Uh, is the worst over as far as margin decline and volumes is concerned for the company? Uh, yeah. So uh, as far as uh, quarter four is concerned, uh, we do see uh, India an encouraging geography. India, we have grown uh, this year uh, for the first nine months by almost 7.75%. And we have progressively grown uh, in India right from FY18 to FY23. If you see this five-year period, we have grown uh, on a CAGR of almost 8% in India. Uh, however, uh, uh, the Africa, Middle East, Turkey region has been a region of concern for us where we have declined this year by almost uh, 18%. Uh, the, the silver lining is that in this uh, last quarter, we have grown uh, quarter on quarter compared to the you know previous uh, year's uh, quarter. We have had a marginal growth in uh, uh, the Africa, Middle East, Turkey volumes, uh, again uh, led by uh, the Egyptian geographies uh, growth, the Egyptian countries growth. Uh, but we would like to believe that uh, you know we have reached. Uh, uh, the end of the tunnel with respect to the volume decline and we hope to grow uh, in the coming quarters as far as the Africa Middle East Turkey region is concerned. Uh, the rest of the world we have more or less been uh, you know flat this year there has been a minor uh, you know decline and we do hope that uh, uh, consumption comes back uh, on on the back of uh, the uh, easier raw material situation both in uh, Turkey as well as uh, US. We also believe that there has been uh, uh, the, all the inventory corrections which were there in the previous year are coming to a close. 
though US, uh, yeah, there is still a bit of inventory correction remaining to be completed. And uh, once uh, you know this is uh, over, uh, on the back of a good raw material pricing situation, we would expect consumption to come back in these uh, markets. Uh, so bottom line, uh, India is uh, doing well. Uh, Amit uh, has been uh, a source of concern and we hope uh, that uh, the worst is over. And as far as the rest of the world is concerned, uh, we again believe that uh, consumption should come back on the back of a good uh, <coughs> situation in terms of pricing. Got that. Uh, in the first nine months, sir, on a consolidated basis, your volumes are down 2%. Your FY23 guidance when we last spoke to you was that it will be flat. Uh, do you maintain your FY23 guidance of flat volumes? We would uh, like to at least, uh, you know, level with uh, last year's uh, volumes. Okay. Uh, let us hope so. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are optimistic. Okay. So, flat volumes this year. What about EBITDA per ton? Because you had guided for 21,000 to 22,000 rupees per ton. Quarter 3 has seen a, a, a higher number than that. Uh, will you actually surpass that considering that raw material prices are easing now and freight rates also are lower? See, the EBITDA per ton increase has come on uh, the back, I know, back of a, a one-time export incentives uh, which we got in uh, Egypt for a, a previous period. As you know, uh, we account for uh, the export incentives once it, on, only when it is received uh, in our books. Uh, so that we got almost 20 crores in uh, the last quarter. Uh, similarly, there has been a, 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 an increase in contribution because of the exchange gains uh, that has that uh, you know the rupee has uh, depreciated against the dollar uh, significantly, or at least by about ten percent in the last uh, uh, year. Similarly, we also had certain you know sourcing gains, uh, but as we say, uh, we would uh, you know strive to grow uh, volumes. Uh, in the coming period and our EBITDA growth will be certainly ahead of uh, the volume growth and uh, again the pad growth uh, we would strive to be ahead of the EBITDA growth okay what was your current uh, the capacity utilization in q3 and now that you expect q4 to be a little better for you to meet that flat volume guidance what could that number look like no the capacity utilization has been around 66 to 67 percent I don't think it will, you know, uh, be anything significantly different. Maybe it may be one percent or two percent higher in there, but then uh, this is the capacity utilization. Yeah. Okay, so ca capacity utilization at sixty-six to sixty-seven percent. This time around, specialty volumes were impacted, and you said it's largely because of what uh, the slowdown that we are seeing in the European region. Uh, do you expect the slowdown to continue? And in that case, will the specialty segment continue to see an impact because of that? Uh, will you make a shift in terms of your suppliers? Will you look at newer uh, geographies, so to say, uh, to uh, take away the impact of slowdown that we are seeing in this uh, particular area? We again believe that we have seen the worst of uh, uh, consumption impact in, in Europe. Uh, we do hope that uh, things uh, will... Uh, uh, you know, turn for the better in terms of consumption in the coming uh, periods as far as Europe is concerned. Again, and again, uh, Europe has been able to very well cope, uh, you know, with the winter. Uh, I do understand that, uh, uh, you know, the temperatures have started, uh, you know, climbing up significantly even uh, in a so-called winter period. So I would uh, like to believe that, you know, Europe will turn for the better in the coming quarters. Okay, so now that we are towards the end of this year as well, can you leave us with what the uh, guidance for FY24 is looking like, EBITDA per ton, volumes, because you are seeing recovery across segments. So as we said, uh, we would uh, hope to level with uh, the volumes of uh, last year, though we have, uh, for the nine-month period, we have, a, we have seen a decline of almost uh, 2%. Uh, but our uh, striving will be to at least, uh, you know, level the volumes of, you know, last year. Uh, let us uh, be optimistic uh, as far as that is concerned. And uh, as we said, uh, we would uh, certainly maintain uh, the EBITDA per ton, uh, accounting for uh, any special one-time uh, gains that we have seen in the last quarter. 
Okay. All right, Mr. Shekhar, it's always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us today and detailing quarter three numbers and the outlook for quarter four as well. We'll slip into a short break now and get you more on the markets and stock specific action on the other side. Stay tuned. Back, this is our segment, Midcap Spotlight, and Ikta is going to be talking about Dishman, Carbogen, and Advanced Enzymes, which are reacting to the Q3 numbers. Ikta. Thanks for that. Well, I'll start with Dishman, which is up around 16 odd percent. So strong performance there. Net profit was up around 33 percent on a year on year basis. Revenue was up 14 percent as well and EBITDA up around 4 percent with the margins coming in at around 17.8 percent versus 19 and a half odd percent. The company has indicated there was strong demand and a healthy order book seen this quarter. The NCE, which is new chemical entity, API and intermediate revenue increased by 16 percent year on year to 46 crores. Carbogen AMSIS, which is basically the CRAMS revenue, the bulk of their business, increased by 9.7% on a year on year basis. Carbogen AMSIS, which is cholesterol as well as the vitamin D analog revenue, also rose by around 51.9% on a year on year basis. So, really, it was firing on all cylinders when it came to segment performance. Advanced enzymes uh, down around 2 odd percent. Net profit was up around 7 odd percent. Revenue was up around 6.4 percent. But the EBITDA was down 15.1 percent year on year with a margin of around 29.3 percent versus 37 percent year on year. Okay, all right, Ekta, thank you so much for joining us. So those two stocks from the pharma space in focus. And with that, we'll take your leave on this edition of Midcap Radar. Stay tuned, your stocks when we return.